Hi, it is me, Mocha Mazel, with Black Expats and Repats in Jamaica. And on today's episode, we are featuring Mr. David Chen. Now, Mr. Chen is Kingston born, Kingston Jamaican born and bred. All right. <laughs> um, yes. yes, Kingston Five. Oh, and he has the number, Kingston Five. Okay, all right. Born and bred in Jamaica, um, is in the hospitality profession, and he is a repat. So uh, for those of you who are listening or who are new, um, Black Expats and Repats in Jamaica is a platform and a service helping people to um, relocate or return to Jamaica. So we are featuring guests on our platforms to give you more insight on their experience and their journeys and why they decided to make Jamaica home. So, Mr. Chen or David, which, which what do you prefer that I call you? No, call me David. David, okay, David. All right, David, it's fine. You can call me Mocha, okay? So, um, huh? Hi, Mocha, and hello to everyone who's actually tuning in and watching and listening wherever you are in the world. <laughs> yes, yes, big up, big up. All right, now, <laughs> so tell us about you. Just give us like an overview of you and who you are and what you do. I start off with I'm a big kid. Mm-hmm. Which means, yeah, free spirited, um, happy go lucky. Someone who loves to cook, <laughs> someone who loves Jamaican culture, someone who enjoys the life. Mm? <laughs> so you hear that, ladies? He loves to cook. Okay, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's just it's just as a, I'm, I'm a true Jamaican, one who is just happy, happy go lucky. You know, trying to make the best out of everything. Very, very, very homely. Um, you know, one who has traveled extensively and understand life. I just want to be happy <laughs> continuously. Don't we all? Don't we all? Exactly. And thank you so much for joining us. And I'm really interested in your journey, your experience. So before we get to how you came back to Jamaica, let's we got to start with how you ended up going wherever you went. So when did you leave? Where did you go? What were you doing? How was it like? So, okay, where did you go? Let's start. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, born in Jamaica, as they um, um, got earlier. Um, after Kingston College, went to the UK. But before before that, in the early ages, um, my mother actually took me to the UK at the age of 9, 10, to experience exactly how it was. And to be honest, I did not like it. You didn't? No, no, no disrespect okay. to the British. I had a passionate interest in Jamaica. And the thing is... And many people back in the, 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 the late 70s, 80s will agree that our educational system back then, you know, at, 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 um, before a teenage age, was actually a lot better in Jamaica than going to the UK. Yeah. Anyway. I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. We're going to touch on it. But yeah, keep going. Yeah. Anyway, well, um, yeah, well, from an early age, came back home to Jamaica, spent about two years in the UK at that, early, at that time, 9, 10. Came back to Jamaica, did my common entrance, uh, went to Kingston College. From Casey, then, I, then my mom said, Come, oh, you gotta come back to England. Come and join the family. Right. Did that. But again, in Jamaica, I said that if I stayed, I would have done very well regardless. Because obviously, once you've got a mindset to persevere and to, to be consistent and to be happy in your surroundings and to be, I see you smiling there. Anyway, right? To do anything that you wanna do, you can do it. And went to the UK again. Then I was meant to be an accountant, found that a bit boring, you know. Then I went into travel and tourism, you know, working for one of the most you know prominent travel agencies in the UK, specializing in, in the Caribbean areas. Fortunately, within a few, within a short time, I um, got an award from the Jamaica Tourist Board as a Jamaica travel specialist, as one of the youngest Jamaica travel specialists. You know, um, did very well, you know, working with the likes of, I can mention names, but we won't do, but top resorts, uh, resort company, um, all inclusive. And that, of course, you know, you know, you know, as a travel specialist, you get the opportunity to actually go through the various places of interest from resort point of view, and also travel the Caribbean extensively. So, you know, I've had that great opportunity. And, um, 
you know, after a while, you know, you settle down, you start a family, but deep down, you know that you definitely want to go back to Jamaica. Mm. But what I say to many people who try to come back home, you can't come to Jamaica for one or two weeks. You got to come for a serious time to actually experience, to know the culture, to know the people, to know your surroundings, to know everything that's really happening. Because you know, from the long term, what many people want to do is to want is to own or build a house, have their own home back home in Jamaica. That's once you have that, you feel as if you are you know you haven't done everything, but you feel as if you have moved to a state where you no know, family can't tell if you come out of my house, nobody can bad mouth you. Nobody can turn a bad word on you. Nobody can say you can't cook the time of night or you have to stay for long in the bathroom, which we all go through when we're building. So, you know, these are things that, that really gave me the, the drive to want to achieve my own and to want to actually return home to do what I love doing best, is to be with people and accommodate people coming home and enjoying the island. So I studied the island extensively. I, I've done many road trips. You know, and enjoyed it many times, but it keep will keep on growing. That's amazing. That's uh, <laughs> this is such a um particular. I'm trying to. So, what as a Jamaican going abroad and helping people tour Jamaica? What is that like? Because I'm curious. Like, what perspectives are you dealing with? as a Jamaican and you helping bring people to Jamaica, but you are not experiencing like what, 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 what's the, what was that experience like being a tour specialist in Jamaica? All right. Let me Did tell you. Did you notice anything or like, what, how was it? Go ahead. From my point of view, and I've actually worked through the various areas of, um, from a travel agency point of view, from a tour operator point of view, from a consolidator point of view, those within the industry to understand these, these terminologies or these jargons. But I personally, I tend to go for the tailor-made service, which is what I personally label myself as. I give you a tailor-made service. So if you come into Jamaica and you come alone or you come with a group or you come with your family, whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to do, yeah, there's things that we, we actually tailor make for you, get going, which means that if you, for example, you're coming home, you just want to, from the, um, you, want to, you want to go on a holiday, or you're coming to do business, or you're coming to do whatever interests or research, because they've actually been on the ground for so long, there's things that we, we can actually do for, do for them. So it, it's no it's specific interest, so to speak. It's very difficult to answer because anything that you want to do, of course, we can actually outsource and try and find a way of how we can actually get things going in the best way for you. So that's the reason why I said tailor-made service, you know, so, you know, and, you know, it, it includes anything from you, from you get in to get out. <laughs> okay, cool. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. So you did that for how long? And I've been in tourism since, since 1989. Nine, from the UK. That's, hey. that's a long time. That's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. And I actually, came, when I came back home, officially, I said I came back home 2013. But I, I did before that. You know what I mean? You know, when I came to settle. And that's why I mentioned earlier, you can't come into Jamaica and spend one week, two weeks, three weeks. So I came and I stayed for seven concrete years before I left. Before I even traveled anywhere. Seven years to actually sit and study certain things. And because even though you're from Jamaica, you have to come back and learn certain things to what you want to do. And because I was actually in St. Thomas too, St. Thomas at the time was a bit set back, was a bit remote, was a bit extremely rural. Um, trust me, no running water in certain areas at the, of where I was building at the time. You know what I mean? So there's certain, a lot of challenges. It was rough. When I say rough, I mean extremely rough. But the beauty of it was that when you get through it, then you can actually go through that whatever roughness that you had you can actually bring the joy to whoever you're accommodating, if that makes sense. You know, so I go through all the hard pain for all my, my, my people or my clients or my friends and family who are coming in, who reach out to me to say, David, I'm coming on the island. I need, I need your support. I need your expertise to do this or do that. But many people think it's easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, trust me, it's, uh, it is, it is, <laughs> it, yeah, it's hard pressure. Yeah. yeah but it's fun because, you know, once you're enjoying anything that you do, then of course it becomes easier as we all know. 
as we should know, I should say. So you have been working in tourism since 1989. Um, mm -hmm. You've been plot. You well, you started plotting on Jamaica in 1999. So that's like almost a 10 year span, right? So what happened? What twist or, or turn to your brain and say, okay, it's time for me to prepare to get back to Jamaica. I want to come back. Like what, what happened? Like, what was it? What was that moment like? Wow. Oh, the transition was planned. Mm -hmm very very important the transition was planned so i knew that i was gonna come home but i didn't know exactly when but um when i came home to build initially i did it at a, at a, at a quick go in a very short time to phase i did by phase by phase so you know me i may have may would have started in, in, in 1999 okay three years time i'm going to get to that level another four years i'm going to get to that level but the final stage, I think I, I'd received two awards, the human, Humanitarian Award and the Ambassador for Peace Award in London by the UPF. And then, then I said to myself, David, I think you can actually go home and do some philanthropy work or do some humanitarian duties. Now, wait a minute. Back let's, go back. let's go back to this because what were these awards? Okay, <laughs> tell us about the awards. You got these prestigious accolades. Say it's well, something along the way. The one was the, I just mentioned two, which is uh, UPF, United, um, Universal Peace Federation, um, which is a, a peace organization in the UK that, um, you know, that, that gave me a peace award. And then um, Youth for Human Rights, YFFR, Youth for Human Rights, out of Los Angeles, an um, organization run by someone called Mary Shuttleworth. And um, yeah, they came across to the UK and again, and they gave me that award for the um, humanitarian award, which I, I kind of received and accepted. Sorry, accepted and received. And then from that now, after then, that was 2013, January, February, that's when I said to myself, David, go home and see what you can do. But, 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 but then in St. Thomas, as I was saying, it's a very, and forgive me for saying this, but then it felt like so there's nothing happening. And even the ministries of, of tourism and all the ministers said, Oh, Mr. Chen, you're flogging a dead horse. Oh, Mr. Chen, you love ripple people too much. Oh, Mr. Chen, I've got so much. This, uh, well, the, I wasn't encouraged, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but at the same time, maybe I should have not take up the, not, not, not persevere. But now I'm actually looking back and smiling at David. You know what I mean? St. Thomas is actually connecting now. The roads are being built. It's, at least you got a foot in there. At least you started. So what I say to many diasporans or those actually coming back home, returning home, make sure that you start. And also many people who were thinking back then, when I was buying blocks, cement and steel, one block when I was buying was 27 Jamaican dollars for one. So that means that a hundred block was $2,700 plus the tax. So let's, three, let's say $3,000. Now, a hundred block is almost eight or nine. $10,000, depend where you buy it. So I mean, I didn't, the, 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 right. A ton, of, a ton of steel, a bag of cement, you understand? So these are things that we, that I think that I did well at the time of building and con constructing. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't know much, but we, we had to stay and learn as much as we can. Oops, sorry. First five in my eyes. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, that's where we are. You know, so I mean, with that perseverance, I said, yes, you complete that project. And to actually serve your clients, you can give them a tailor-made service because you have to actually experience everything what you're talking about. But when I put a figure to it, what do you mean? I talk about another I talk about another thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. So um, now we are at... Um, so you came back to Jamaica in 2013 from the UK and as a repat, what has been your experience integrating back into, was it an experience or was it something that was just easy for you? Like how was it for you getting back involved in Jamaica wholeheartedly, like fully in Jamaica? Well, Jamaican Chinese, that's the first thing, so I'm a piece of young money. 
are we Jamaicans fees so instead of Jamaican and Chinese have money. Then two, you come from Britain, so you have the British pound, so them fees that you're rich. <laughs> we fees are rich. But um one thing I tell people, or one of many things I tell people, do not come home and act as if you're better than your own people then. Number one. Number two, try and fit in as best as possible, which means that know everybody. You know the bad people, you know the good people, you know where the shops are, you know where the where anything that you need to your reach. Right? Three, make sure that you know reliable people who can be of support, of assistance, assistance, taxi drivers, a housekeeper, a gardener, if you have if you're in, in that area. You understand? So, and you know, that, that's it really. So once you have that network going, so I'm a, I'm a person who believes in network. So all that, that I mentioned just now, the network opportunity. So once you have that going, then you know that, you know, your network is already being built slowly by slowly. So that's how I, I survived easily. But as I said, it was hard because when you do return, initially, you, because you don't know the various prices of certain things, you will be paying some foreign price along the way until you understand how it's being done properly or how you should do it properly. So, I mean, you know, you know, within my arena, I've lost a lot of money unnecessarily. But one person said to me, Mr. Chin, I'm trying to come from you have a pay for the rent. <laughs> and a friend from mine from Switzerland, I won't call his name. I came on, I was there complaining one day, I was so miserable. I won't say the exact words in thing, but I said, bleep, bleep. So I said, well, he said, what well, I'm telling you? He said, well, come on, those, 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 almost mush up on this. He said, come here, come here. I dream you, can you do it? Let me, and, pan you. Let me, S, pan you, and let me, P, pan you. So you, you, you fill in the blank. You got to repeat that. So, you, 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 you went blank for a minute, so repeat that. What? Okay. Yeah. So I'm playing a friend from Switzerland, yeah. right? I was there at my gate complaining, oh, you know, come home and, and things aren't going right and the whole system and I left people in charge to do that and that. So he came and said, but he speaks with a strong, hardcore pop work. You know, when you when you got the European accent and you mix it with the Jamaican, that pop is very strong and nasty. He mm. said, eh? You get that and I complain. Then we, I'm So in other words, he's saying, where you were you know exactly what Jamaica is. You just eat in your stride. Take your time. Don't worry. If you, the more you worry, the more stressed you get. So if Jamaican said to you, see my soon come. That soon come, you just take your time. And when that person arrives, you know you do something else in the meantime. And when that person arrives, then you know that that person's time is that time until that person goes. So that's how it is. Yeah. So to integrate, to, to, to get involved and to, and to settle in, it's hard to repeat. But the learning process was bitter and sweet. Mm -hmm. I know many people would agree to that one. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, we we we're getting familiar with the foreign tax. Um, for the most part, those of us who at least you have some, you know, history and background. But for those of us who are such as myself, who are complete, who who was anyway, completely foreign to all of that stuff, it'll. It can shock your system a little bit, but the yeah, the learning process is right. and sweet. But yeah, I now I, I know now, and it's I know beautiful. how to go, and I know where to go. I love it. Yeah, and all of that stuff. So I'm with you right there, hundred <laughs> percent. But okay, so now we came back to Jamaica. We got integrated. So what's been happening? since like what's been your what's been occupying you since you've been returning outside of building your home and all of that um, one of my should is it's, but i've got um a website as well which is a taste of our culture.com which actually um, showcases people doing their business from an entrepreneurial point of view and also um, it's a it's an outlet for those who want to put in the products and the services and more the mainly for visuals so I created something called the web visuals. So people can actually put the, put the videos on there. But um, I also, um, when I built, I built my beautiful little place. It's called Paradise View. So it's more like um, I'm there. Well, when I'm off, when I'm on the island, I tend to be there a lot. So people come and they can do the video shoots, the photo shoots. 
the various retreats, if you want to come in and, you know, like yourself, then come and do, do any form of, any, any form of setting, because of how the view is, excuse me, one second. Mm-hmm. Because of how the view is, so a lot of people tend to use it for, you know, that setting, you know, family, family, family gathering, family celebrations, or any form of small corporate events. So what I've really been occupied with, do my little broadcasting, my little video, video blogs now and then, assisting people as, as I mentioned, based on the, the tours, which is which is which is the core. But because of the pandemic, you know, we've got to be very creative mm-hmm. and still keep you happy and still doing the right things <laughs> to make you, to make you live and be happy. So um yeah, still engulfed in the culture, still keeping the culture alive and clean. Yeah, and um yeah that's what we do and still spreading the positive words of Jamaica as much as we can. So when things are open up properly we having the that business interest coming in again as we we always expect. Awesome. So what what are your I'm gonna um tap into some of the stuff you said previously, but um I wanna know what tips or advice do you have for repats and why do you think they should come back to Jamaica? Are you in Jamaica right now? Yes. Where? I'm in Kingston. For real? Yeah. When last you heard a gunshot? I don't think I don't think I heard a gunshot since I've been. How long have you been here? I've been here over a year. Where you coming from? The United States, Mississippi. Mississippi. Okay, I was in Atlanta recently. Yeah. And the broken the broken old vehicle. The day the day I left. Mm-hmm. And almost every week, and I hear gunshots. Mm-hmm. Just in Atlanta. A couple of days ago, some gun went up at the airport. Yeah. So let me just say something to you now. And to all the ex well, I don't want to call the experts, but um to all the people who are planning to come home. Who have got the passion to come. I don't want to use the word home in there. Yeah, all the people are planning to come home. Remember, home is home. And when we all went to foreign, we went to foreign with a plan so I spent on four years, I want five years. Were you born in Jamaica? No, I'm not Jamaican. Okay, awesome. I'm going to talk about that another time. <laughs> right? I'm going to interview you properly. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, but the, the plan is for anyone who leave Jamaica as a yardie, because many people in the area hear the word yardie, they say it's a group, group of Jamaican drug dealers and gangsters. Mm. Like that. A yardie is somebody like me. Mm. Remember that with Chester? All right, now. Who leave Jamaica with a positive interest to go a foreign and make a better life and come back home. So all those who want to return home from the long time that you've been away, you could have been to, you could have been in, come from Clarendon, you could have come from wherever it is, and you could have lived as far as wherever you have lived. We know that some people, many people personally have lived out there support and wish me to die yard. But let's put it into the negative first and convert the negative to a positive. When you watch the the, 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 the travel reports, I'm not going to call the names, but the various media centers and the, the, the travel travel news reports and this, they always put out some form of disclaimer or some form of negative. Do not travel to Kingston because of this. Do not travel to Jamaica because of that. You understand? Or even with the ganja. The ganja right now is the most expensive commodity. Say, ah, my name, Mike Tyson is actually going, is going to be the the CEO of some large ganja or something, where, where our government is burning down ganja farms, which ganja should be put in to do some research, so the youth can, can, can package them and send our farms so we can start big farms, we can pay off the business like our farms. So my thing is, is that all the persons who are foreign who want to come home, you all need to work together collectively for a better Jamaica. When you see things happening abroad, or when you read negative, when you need to make up on the nice, Right, so you, you need to lobby the high commission and the ministers and the ministries and the various um, um, consulates or wherever it is that, that you know you need to lobby in for your own parish, your own community. That's the first thing you need to do first before you think of coming home. Because if you're going to come home like that and you don't even know where you're going to, then you're going to have problems. So what you need to do, what, that's the first thing. Know your community, know your area, know exactly what you really want. And of course, know the people, but also fight for the betterment, not just for you because you have the money, but for the betterment for your people, for your community, for those who live around you. Very, very important. Very, very important. Not for you, 
for those around you. Because once the people around you is happy, then you'll be even better happier in the long term. And why is that so important? That, Can you go into like more detail? I know it's, I know like overall in general, but why? Um, cause for the people listening and who, you know, and aren't that familiar with the landscape of Jamaica, can you just like go a little bit deeper into why it's important? I'd say from layman's term, I'd say infrastructure. Okay. For those who are buying places that like already developed, like, um, uh, maybe weighted communities, townhouses, or things like that, things like that, they'll be fine. Cause everything is already done. You just pay the monthly, the monthly, uh, the monthly maintenance that, that, that covers for the, for the building or for the, for the properties or for the premises, right? For those who are building from scratch, from ground, from excavation down, from foundation up, then we know that we're going to have to deal with the various parish councils, the various, um, planning permission areas and things like that. So that's what I'm saying to know the area, know what you're getting involved in, right? Know what is there within, within, within the community of whatever distance. So that's what, that's what I say from an important point of view to get all those legalities in place. Cause sometimes you return home to say, okay, then I'm, I'm coming home to do to spend six months to work on this. And one application may take you a year or more. You understand? You may plan to do this, but when you look, certain material may not be here at the time to even get certain things started. You know, so you know these are things that simple little things that we need to put into 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 our mindset before we make a move. All right, right, okay. Um, what do you think about like the the negative propaganda? I know you touched on it a little bit, but like, how do you think it's impacting Jamaica? Like, versus the what actually happens versus the media and the propaganda. What do you think are the effects? Um, or are you thinking that's like what may be deterring people, or like what do you what do you think the overall effects of that is? Uh, current season, which is a pandemic season, right? If you you're, you well, you, you've been in the states, are you living in the states? You realize all the states is right now, and even um, the UK, people are allowed to go anywhere. People are allowed to go out. We understand that. In a, in a various news reports from time to time, you hear that, you know, um, COVID is, is rising again or this is happening. But I think with Jamaica right now, I'm not saying that I fully object to it, but there's too much of this COVID being pushed on onto us. So it's like a scaremongering. I'm just saying that from a personal observation, right? Um, that's, the, that's, that's the biggest thing at the moment. With this gun culture again, which we, which we, we mentioned that, if you realize to what I understand, it's actually more over from many gang related issues or something, someone that, that knows someone who caught a problem. So it could be related somewhere along the way. All right. That's two. Um, of course you do have issues happen whereby robbery happen here or there, you know, but again, it's for you just to be vigilant. You know, and that's the only way possible, really, for you to be sensible. And again, it comes back to what I keep on repeating, is to know about the island, know about your surroundings, things like that. That's very, very important. You know, and of course, just the way or you carry yourself, not saying that you're going to cushion up yourself because you scare people, you're going to, no, you don't do that. But you just, you know, just, just be sensible. Um, and overall, that, that, that is, that is really it, really. It's just, it's just, it's just to be, just, just to use your common sense in all instances. You know, um, you know, as, a, as some people mention the word fast, you know, whatever it is, you you you, you don't just go out there and and and, and oh, you're going to a year. I'm going to buy a body of food. I'm going to buy a body of beer. I'm gonna... no, you know, it's yeah, it's just it's just again just to be sensible. You know, I can't really explain that any any, any easier or any any you know more. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to jump back to you referencing your educational experience. Now, I've heard this from quite a few people um, as far as the, and not just, you said the UK, but I'm, I've been told about this in the US as well. There's stark uh, educational um, differences between people coming from Jamaica or, or any or other um, countries what what was that like like what was what was your experience because you said it was back then but i still hear about it till now that the education here is just much more ahead <laughs> um, they're in the u.s yeah in the u.s 
you know, things are, are things have definitely changed now in certain ways. You know, because obviously with technology and all of that. But I mean, the discipline that we had. I mean, you know, without all the smartphone and without all these gadgets, in, within within my time, it was a totally different discipline. If you realize now on the streets, it's 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 it's, it's well well. <laughs> Of course, um, the U.S. will be will be definitely more, more advanced with with certain technology, things like that. And of course, no people don't really spend that much time at home per se, based on where where you know constantly kids are, things like that are concerned from an educational point of view. But based on based on how the world is, you know, you know everything is is really accessible. You know, so it's, it's all all it's all down to the discipline again and the determination. So I won't even mention the education body. Based on based on based on no the no factor because many people are home so it's really it's really it really depends on the parent or the parents at that particular home to actually do exactly what they need to do obviously to get the kids or the children in the right order. Awesome. Okay, so what are your future plans um, in Jamaica? Like, what are you what are you hoping to do establish? What's in your future? <laughs> Can you tell us? <laughs> I didn't really want to disclose much, but um, well, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a beautiful plan for the eastern part of Jamaica. I do hope everything goes well. Okay. Yeah. So that's all we get. Okay. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> you got a beautiful plan. That's okay. Well, like, what is it? Is it dealing with, like, um, the hospitality sector that you've been doing? Okay. Well, at least promise us the exclusive when you when you do. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, Mr. Chair, that's all I have. Um, unless you want to flip the tables and ask me any questions. Um, or just it, are willing what to is it like for you being in Jamaica? How how has it been for the last year? I you're from Mississippi, right? Yes, I'm from Mississippi. Every time I think about Mississippi, I think of Mississippi burning. Yeah, so you know, positively now compare Mississippi to Jamaica. So you're in our uh, rankings, are you? Um, I'm in. I don't know how to explain. I'm in Kingston Ten. I guess that's I, I bet. Okay. okay. You drink soup? You have to. I'm still learning what soup is here. So I'm thinking soup for y'all is like stew to us back at home. So what do you mean by soup? Get, be, give me a, a example. A, a big pot, sure enough water than that. If you eat vegetables or chicken or whatever it is. Vegetable, chicken, soup or something like that. And, and it's, it's more like a tea. Yeah, 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 yeah. With, with a lot of ground provision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I eat that. Yeah. You're coming up with topic now. What was your experience like coming up with Jamaica? <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, for anybody who's been following me, they know that I just I didn't like living in America. Uh, for one, the race was a big factor. Um, and if anybody is following the news in America, you know you you will understand for the most part. Anyway, so I wanted to be in a um, predominantly black country. Um, and I didn't want to be too far from home. So that's why I decided on Jamaica. Um, Jamaica has been beautiful. Like, I love it. It's, it's not without its, um, issues. Like it's definitely been a learning experience, but like you said, I'm so grateful for them. Um, because you just appreciate things so much more. And, um, I'm just soaking it all up and I'm just uh, absorbing everything. And um, I love it. I really can't see myself being anywhere else. So that's what it's been like for me. And I just, I love um, just the, like how no day is the same, all the different encounters you're going to have and the random personalities. And <laughs> people you, you know, you know, it's just it's just <laughs> you never know what you're gonna encounter when you walk out on the road. So um yeah, I just I just I don't know how to explain it to most people. It's just a, it's a different level of peace, I think, um, that you have being here and 
as tell people it happens. So you think you should be here for a long time or are you going back to Mississippi? Oh yeah, I'm y'all ain't getting rid of me. Y'all So you're gonna stick here, right? What are you gonna do? What's your profession? Um well so I started Black Express and Repass in Jamaica. And so that's going to be an expatriate service. Um, basically helping people come and get settled here, like for real, not just coming to visit or like as a tourist, but actually integrate right. with Jamaican society. Um, and also um, I have another business that I'm working on, um, which I'll be, I haven't flushed out the full details yet, but It'll be dealing with something with wellness and all of that. Excellent. Awesome. So, um, that. Let's come to Paradise View. You'd love it. Yeah. I, yeah, I will. I will be there. I'm glad you extended the invitation because I'm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there. Um, yeah. And I, um, I create content. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. So. Awesome. Yeah, and it's centered around Jamaica. So basically, yeah, I'm all in at this point. Excellent. All right, that sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah so you know, you know, we look at we definitely look to do some collaboration within what we're doing to we work together to strengthen exactly what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for joining. Okay. Um, now you can give your whatever you would like to share that you would like for people to have access to. Um, and also I'll, I'll be um, linking things as well to direct people to you. Um, but you can tell the people again, like, you know, what you're doing or what you, where they can find you if they want to utilize your services. So okay. you want to give that spiel. All right. Um, Right. My organization is called A Taste of Our Culture. If you want to find David Chen, you can look for www.atasteofourculture.com. However, you can search Caribbean David Chen anywhere. Caribbean David Chen. Telephone numbers are there. Emails are there. Um, I've got a small little property for all my Jamaican people coming home. In the eastern part of Jamaica, not many people come to the east. So, you know, I'd love to invite you all. Just come and chill out, come and relax, come and enjoy the beauty of it, the bath fountain, the regular falls, the pole ball, the area. Um, there's so much to do. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, based on any information that we can share and that we can, you know, yeah, that we can share to let your journey be easier, of course, with the black expats and repats in Jamaica alongside what we're doing here with Mocha. We're here to strengthen and to support each and every one out there to make sure that we do the best. So Mocha is in Kingston. Mm. I'm in Kingston and St. Thomas. And that's all I can say, Mocha. And I hope you, Mocha, I wish you all the best with your project. Thank you. Happy, happy. I hope that people warm to you. Yeah. And, you know, and give you that respect. And I, I must say that well done to, to what you're doing. Thank you. I did something similar when I first started. That was my first project, Voicing for Jamaica. And then we created Caribbean Connection. And then we are now into a taste of our culture globally. So you're doing a good thing, and I'm yeah. there to give you so as much support as I can. That's all I can hope for. Like honestly, like it's I'm just trying to give people the insight and the options yeah. and all that. So yeah, thank you. All right, and <clears throat> that's it. That's all we have. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, you go, oh my goodness, we've been on for a good time. Oh, we chat too much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, I'm trying to before we, uh, yeah, because it'll probably go a bit longer. But um, yeah. Yeah. so this is. Um, Thank you. We have our YouTube channel. This, this is going to be online and on our podcast. So um, be ready to share um, with all your people. <laughs> and okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So thank you so much yeah. for your time. I appreciate it. So nice to meet you. I'm sure it'll be in present soon. Um, I'm just down the road, so. Yeah. We only have to yeah. I'm on your walk, I should say. All right. Soon mm -hmm. come. Soon come. All right, y'all. So that's it. Thank you so much. This is Mocha Mazel with Black Expats and Repats in Jamaica. And see you later. Maybe.